Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop and we are working on the Bombi today. But first... So you've been hearing Dig Dug's power steering pump whine for a while. We are going to do something about that today. We've got the guys from PSC here and they're going to help us put a full hydro assist steering into Dig Dug. The first thing we've got to do is get the Bombi out of here and then get Dig Dug in. Oh, did you get a ride in Dig Dug, huh? Lucky you. So the steering in Dig Dug is the original steering gear that came in this truck and then the power steering pump that came on the 5.3 LS engine that I put in there years ago. And we've got huge 38 inch tires on it now so the stock steering is not adequate to turn these. So what we've got here is a new power steering gear from PSC. Yeah. They make the entire thing at their factory and it is amazing. This stuff is all brand new. This isn't rebuild parts. It's uh, their power steering pump, their ram, their cooler their reservoir. This is top of the line stuff. These are the old tires that uh, were first on the Morver. These are the generation one Milestar Patagonia, still running. All right, I guess next we go for that pump. Yep. There you go. You're free. Oh, there we go. Remember that one back in. So we just pulled out the pump. Now we're going to put in the new one. It'll be much prettier and more Pretty. better. So let's get the pump bolted in the bracket. We'll get that pressed back on and uh, start putting it back together. Man, I feel like I'm working with a pit crew today. You guys have done this. Now we just have the gear and the ram and the cooler to mount. There is a lot of mechanics around the front of this square body. So I'm just kind of... <laughs> back in the backgrounds, but I'm super excited about this. And yeah, we... check out the steering gear. Man, that looks awesome. Yeah. So I think we're ready to put this guy in and then go figure out all the hose lengths. What is that, metal? It's made out of solid metal. I've been using PSC stuff for basically as long as I've been wheeling. I've got it in the Banana, I've got it in the Morver, and we've got it in the Wrecker. Everything has been working amazing the whole time. It's a product that I believe in and that we're going to continue to use in all of our builds because okay. it's a well thought out system that just works. Steering gear going in. So here's how this works. The fluid goes through there and the air goes and cools it all off. New pump, new power steering gear and a ram assist. This should be a lot better. So we're trying to get the ram parallel to the tie rod. And so we need a little uh, bracket or something to space it up so there'll be just the right angle. We've got everything installed now. The power steering gear is in, the cylinder, the ram assist is connected down there, all the hoses are on, so we're starting to fill up the system with fluid. I'm ready to go home because it's past quitting time, but Tom's like, no, we got to stay here and work. Yeah, there's work to be done. Plus, I want to see Dig Dug steer nicely. Quiet, quietly? Yeah, <laughs> reverently. While Tom uh, drops this off the lift, we're going to go give Rhett the news that he's going to have to move his Corvair. Rhett, what? you got to move your Corvair. Dig Dug's coming out. So this car ain't much to look at, but it runs pretty good. And now he's gonna be able to indicate to people whether he's turning right or left reliably. Those dang kids and their loud mufflers. Speaking of mufflers, Tom did something on this truck. Like I'm totally changing the subject now and I apologize. <laughs> But Tom did something on this truck that I've been dreaming about forever. I don't know if it works or not, but we did it and it works. Yeah, so it works. If you're familiar with V8 exhaust, there's X pipes and then there's H pipes. Y pipes. Yeah, well, yeah, for single exhaust. If we're but, just going through all the letters. Yeah. <laughs> but I always wondered what it would be like to take a Series 10 muffler and, and use that as the X pipe it has dual pipe. inlet, dual outlet. So it connects both sides of the exhaust together. And then on the dual outlet, we just ran regular mufflers after that. So Dig Dug sounds amazing and it's got really good power and it doesn't have a drone. 
So I'd say it's, so it's I'd, working. I'd say it's working. I'm gonna, let me show you this. We're under the truck on my back. Peanut. Peanut can't handle this. So here's the two dual exhaust right here. This is the left bank. This is the right bank. I know it's backwards because the way we're oriented. This is the H pipe or X pipe or whatever. It's just a series 10 Flowmaster. And then it goes back into dual. So dual inlet, dual outlet, and then out the back. What are those? Are those 50 series? Yeah, they're 50. So there's a pair of 50 series Delta flows back there. It's almost too quiet. figured we'd come out and test Dig Dug. Do you hear that? What you do not hear is my new power steering setup from PSC. We're gonna go try it on some trails. It's a success. Huge win. The no squeaking is great, but the steering is super smooth. Even when I'm in the rocks, even when I'm in four wheel drive, it's totally dampened now like it wasn't before. So the ram assist in there is awesome. I love it. Tom's happy with it. He doesn't shut up about it. <laughs> is he tickled? He's tickled yeah, pink. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, these guys came all the way from Central Texas, Texas Fort Worth, Texas. Wow. That was pretty cool. Right, now the part you've all been waiting for. The bomb bee. <laughs> Sting. Oh Ouch. wow, we gotta keep that little sound bite. That's gotta be like the opening of the video. Yeah, every video from now on. All right, what are we working on today? Back here, this area. The I'm stinger. The stinger, yes, that's what's on the back of bomb bees. Yes. There's a couple things we've got to do here. We've got to make a place for the radiator and we've got to make a way for the air to get through the radiator and it's got to look cool. Rhett, what are you doing? Welding stuff. So there's some really super boring logistical things that have to happen to make a project like this work. And one of them is making sure that we have the parts here in time. Now, I know in the past we're like, we're waiting on parts and everybody's like, shut up about waiting on parts. Oh, I, I, I understand your frustration. Uh, I felt it first and then I told you about it and then you felt it. So all that was to tell you we're waiting on parts. <laughs> Actually, no, we have a, we're, come, we're turning over a new leaf because you can't, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Tom's gonna order some parts that future us is gonna need. <laughs> Right, Scott. We're gonna do it early. We're gonna yeah. get them out here ahead of time. That's the plan. All right. Hey, we went around the whole Bombay and we made a list of all the things that we need to order. It's a very long list, so we're only gonna give you the highlights. Cam phaser delete. Gasket kit. Head bolts. Oil cooler adapter slash fitting. Coil packs. Alternator and bracket. Variable valve timing delete. Lifters. Lifter valley cover and gasket. Head gasket. Head bolts. Fan shroud kit. Plug wires. Heater box. Brake lines. One and a half inch exhaust tubing. Fuel pump. Headlight covers. Adams drive shaft. Windshield wiper motor. And last but not least, we need to get ourselves a turbo encabulator. Oh, yeah. Such an instrument is the turbo encabulator. So Tom's gonna go order those parts. I'm gonna go out to the storage containers because Jeff Carter just stopped by. He needs some Corvair parts. We've got them. So let me show you something that we don't get to see here very often. It's a rainy day. Oh wow, look at those. Let me see one of those. It's a back. He's bringing the panels for Hefe's Corvair. Hefe's got a 66 Corsa. Getting some custom, nice. custom panels. All right. What we're getting out of here for Jeff Carter, not Hefe, 
is a deck lid off of a 66, 65. This is off a of 65. Is that what you wanted? Yep, it is. It's in, it's in pretty good shape. Looks like I think it might have a couple it's got of a little ding right there. A, but yeah, it might have a ding or two in it, but it's not rusty. No, that's it'll work. Let me show you some of my greatest fans. <laughs> These are actually blowers, technically, but oh, there he goes. All right. Good luck. I'm glad to get it out of my shop. Even though it's raining, the show must go on. Jake. Gotta looking, do what you gotta do. High fashion. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that's right. What you got going on here? I'm gonna throw some brake pads on this uh, Ford F-150 while looking good in the rain. Cause that's what's most important. You done? I'm done welding stuff. Okay. Why don't you get the plasma cutter and let's cut both of these off. I think we're ready to do that now that this is all Look, at, look how solid that is. So cut those off and then clean all these off okay. and we're gonna get ready to weld the winch plate on. What are you doing in here, Rhett? Breaking the Bombi. Breaking the Bombi, we need to be building the Bombi. All right, so I just got those cut off, and it looks so clean without them. So I'm gonna start right here by cutting this out, then I'm gonna say some things. There it is. Okay. So we didn't explain very good what's going on here with the reverse fan, so I'm gonna take a quick moment and just explain that to you. This is the direction of rotation right here. That's what the water pump is designed to run. That's how they designed it from the factory. We're gonna keep doing that because of all the reasons. So what I had to do was I had to buy a reverse pitch fan, and then I had to flip it 180 degrees. So now it's a pusher fan. So if you can come right here and see these blades, the way these blades are shaped, this fan is designed to spin this way counterclockwise and it will grab air from this side and push it through to this side. Had a couple questions about the clutch fan. Um, it wasn't clear. We got rid of the clutch option. On a pusher fan, the clutch won't work because the clutch is dependent on heat from the radiator for it to regulate. It won't have any, so this is completely 100% solid mechanical. So that's how this fan's going to work. Now we don't need this much fan in the winter usually, but this is gonna be a year round buggy. This is the same fan that we have on the record. It's keeping the 8.1 cool. It shouldn't have any trouble keeping this 5.3 cool. I kind of joked around about not changing the oil on the Bombi. Sometimes I'm a little troll myself and so I'll say things that are funny to me but sad for all of you. I actually am kind of an oil changing freak. <laughs> anyway, let's just leave the past in the past. Let me show you how we're gonna maintain this one. So I'm gonna need to, oh, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> oh yeah. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to go under there. On my back. Oh, in the debris. You need all the clearance. Okay, here comes Peanut. I know, Peanut, how can you tell? How can you tell when I'm gonna get on the ground, huh? How can you tell? All right, I'll come give you loves in a minute, okay? But I've got work. Okay, I'll just one hog right now. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here, go play, go play. All right, so underneath here, we have this panel that's removable. And when we remove it, here's the oil drain plug. Here's the oil filter. So it's just as easy, if not easier to get to than most automobiles. I just realized. <laughs> oh, God. I really like you, but you are a pest. You're a menace. That's what you are. You're a menace, dog. Okay, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> so hopefully I was a little more clear on that. So we've got some good things going on. 
So this is the way it goes, counterclockwise, really fast. Wow. I'm going to be doing what I like to refer to as a nasty stack. That means instead of designing the whole thing and then building it, I just start welding pieces on and adding to them till it's right. I'm going to make the lower shroud here permanent. So the motor will just kind of set down onto it. Okay. That's gonna be close. That's how we like it. We like our shrouds like we like our shaves. Close. Like your shaves? Yours are so close. No. Those are such close shaves. Kinda of eyeball it, look at it. See if it's what you like and kind of like it. And you just keep. I mean, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it. That's how I do it. I just, I just keep doing it. going to start tacking this in place because I feel like it's going to fit. The fan shroud that's part of the structure. The grill is what I'm worried about. We've got to get the grill right or the whole back end of this thing is going to look like, you know, who knows what. Sounds about right. You ever stick a Coke can on your spoke of your bike to make it sound like a dirt bike when you were a kid? No. My generation was dumb. Is that what you did? That's what we did. <laughs> Run over a can. I, I mean, kids did that. Like I stuff a did. can in front of your back tire on your yeah. bicycle and make it sound like an engine. Increase some friction. Look at that, Tom. Oh, you got it half done. Yeah. It's looking good. I'm happy with that. I just gotta, I just gotta tack a couple more things together. Ooh, parts. Look at that thing. Look at this unit right here. Okay. This is the radiator we chose to use. It might be too big, it might be too small. No one's gonna know until we give it a try. You never know till you test. If it's not, I won't tell you. I want this grill to be able to come off really easy. So that like if we ever have to do any work on any of this, we just undo undo four bolts and there it is. We gotta start cutting some holes. Hole yeah, right just, here. just mark just mark the side of it right there. So we're probably gonna want a hole like maximum and then I need to come up with a with a design for this so I've got to cut a notch out of this and slide it under and this will represent our piece of metal then we'll have to put a, a stop in right there so that we don't get a, a massive air leak out of there unless we want it for propulsion this will essentially be the bottom of our core support, and then we just need to build the sides and the top, and then mold it in and try to make it look like the back of a barracuda. Not the car, the fish. Not the car, not the fish, but the song. How do you make something look like a song? <laughs> Is that for your Corvair? Yeah, they're yeah. for all the core bears we have. Okay. Core bears. If you want to hear one of my cantankerous comments, it's that you can't get refills for classic cars anymore at auto shop, like at auto parts stores. Now you've got to buy the whole thing kind of off the internet. And you lose the, the really high, high gloss stainless steel trico when you use these, so you have to take these apart and load them in your tricos. But 
It's just a gripe. All right. That. Oh, look at that. It's not this big. This is way bigger than it needs to be. I'm thinking, because right now I just do whatever I feel like. like. I feel like this should be out here about six inches. So that's what we'll do. We'll do it about six inches. So that's about, mm, let's go right there. You're just getting away with what you can while Tom's in there. Yeah, I'm doing, working as fast as I can. And then, so it will be boxed out around here and then some kind of a grill. Not cheap. Not international. Maybe we'll just design something and just have Flog cut it out really nice. I don't know. Killed two birds with one stone right there. We mopped up a mess and put out a fire. Efficiency, that's what I always say. That's the bottom of the course of course right there. to doing a really nice nasty stack is to look around and see what you've got and use that. Cut the wrong one. Dang it. So I was supposed to cut, I was supposed to cut this line across here, but I cut this line across here but where it's going, no one will ever know because the editors are going to cut this out. Aren't you boys? Okay, let's see if this fits. Rhett, you've got some gaps to fill. I love gaps. Okay, go ahead and weld that all up. Okay. And then we'll put this in and you'll fill some gaps. I'd rather have the gap be on the bottom. Well, what I'm going to do is we're going to drop this on the bottom and then we're going to smash this metal down to it. And that way it'll direct the airflow up. It's kind of how I designed it. See if it'll pass inspection. Well, it's not falling off. It looks like it's airtight, which is all we need. Okay. The grill can be pretty close to the radiator if you want to. I don't I think we should just design something. For the grill? Know. Yeah. You got flog cut it, or you could just make a mesh pattern or yeah. Rebar. Rebar. Something light and Keep airy. Gear out of it. Something something that says springtime. So give people hope. Yes. So this shroud will, will come in right here and, and basically over, yeah. overlap we'll that with an eighth of an inch. So I like to put that pinch weld stuff on there and that gives it a seal and not metal on metal contact. Kind of that foam stuff. It's not. It's a. It's the pinch oh, weld. Oh yeah. It's a pl hard plastic. What else were we calling it? Uh, wind lace. Wind lace. That's what Fisher Body called it. Do we still have a big roll of that back there? We in the comics. We should have a couple different sizes of it. Okay. We're fabricators after all. But we're not very good, so we have to cover our ends with 
Windlace. All right, it has been an awesome week. We got Dig Dug taken care of. We're back on the Bombi. Rhett's doing an awesome job. We've got to clean up the shop, but we're not going to show you that. You're welcome. Thanks for watching.